how our uh, spiritual practice can uh, help us manage time, information and energy you talked about earlier. It definitely helps you to manage energy, isn't it? Hmm? Yes. Definitely it does. Information, to manage your information properly or not to succumb to the tendencies caused by the information of the past information, energy is a very important part. The old rut has formed. If you want to get out of it, you need some energy. If you don't have enough power, you can't get out of it. It will take you in the same rut. So if you generate sufficient energy, you can also handle the tendencies caused by the old information. The karma can be broken only if you have the needed energy. So these two things, it definitely serves. Above all, once your energies are in a certain way, what somebody does in twenty-four hours, you may do it in six hours or what you do in twenty-four hours, somebody may do it in three days, which is a fact for us. So all three things are being managed in a certain way. But specifically about time, if we want to have a grasp of time, then we would need a, a sadhana which is of a different nature. If you want to have mastery over time, there's a completely different kind of sadhana. This gives you some, but the mainly is focused towards handling the karmic information and the energy. If one wants to have mastery over time, it needs a different approach. If you have to go that way, either you must have an enormous understanding of various aspects of life, it'll become extremely scientific or you must be simply willing to listen. If you have either one of these qualities, it's possible. The first one that I said, an enormous understanding, that will not happen in a short time. That cannot happen in a short time. It takes a lot of… it takes a lot. It will take lifetimes for people to understand how it actually happens. What is time? I know science has some explanations for time. It's fine, they've taken a few steps but it's nowhere near the ultimate reality of what is time. So, I would say going into that such sadhana right now limits itself to only those people who will simply listen. If I tell them, jump into your well, they will jump. Not an open well, tube well. <laughs> yes? If I say, jump into your tube well, they will squeeze themselves and go into the tube well. If they are like that, we can do kala-related sadhana. You have heard of Kirtimukha? Every temple is adorned with the image of Kirtimukha. When Shiva said simply, ah, you eat yourself up, he said, I'm hungry. He said, you eat yourself up. He simply ate himself up. Only his face, mouth and hands were left. Everything else he ate himself up. So, Shiva said, you are a glorious face. You are above all gods. So, Every temple has the face of Kirtimukha, where hands are into the mouth, everything, the body is gone, he ate it up. His own body, he ate it up because Shiva said so. No reason, no sense, but simply ate it up. So he rose above all gods. What is being said is that he rose above time and space and everything. He is above gods means he is risen beyond all these dimensions. Because even gods are subject to some of these realities, he is above all that. <laughs>